yeah, it's it's very accurate what you say, Christine. I think we all feel, uh, you know, when you're going through a loss, like, well, what's going on, Lord? You know, what what do you want me to learn from this? What do you want me to see? And those are very mature questions, by the way. I mean, if you're if you're dealing with something and you're asking the Lord, hey, where are you? What's going on? You're asking the right questions. You're 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 drawing near to the right source, right? Um, it, it's it's when you go to, like you said, CB, other things to cope. And I think about when I was younger, the other things that I went to, you know, to cope were boys, relationships with the wrong guys, you know, with relationships with the wrong people, uh, sex, drugs, you know, um, alcohol, uh, run, run, run. I get on the busy treadmill and just stay busy and disconnected and distracted, you know, just stay distracted, uh, lose yourself in something except reality. And the reality is that the Lord wants us to lose ourselves in him. I realized that I actually had to feel the loss. You know, I think sometimes as Christians, we think, oh man, the devil just stole from me. So, you know, I'm just going to run into the Lord. I'm going to press into him and he's going to make it all better. And, you know, you know, you have all these truths that we hold, that we hold fast to in the word, like the fact that there's eternity. And there's so many truths that we hold to that can bring comfort to us. But what I've noticed, especially in women who lose children um, through miscarriage is that there's this idea that you have to just get over it. And I think something about loss, something that's really important is that like, even what, what Christina was saying about mourning, like you're still mourning. Like there is this period where you have to acknowledge the pain, you have to acknowledge the loss and you have to allow, you have to, you have to let the Lord into that healing process. You know, it isn't just slap a bandaid on it. God is good. He'll always be good. You know, where you're, you know, you have treasures in heaven. Yeah, that's all true. But it doesn't take away from the fact that there's actual pain, there's actual mm -hmm. suffering, there's actual this grieving um, mm -hmm. period of time. And the Lord taught me how to grieve and that it mm -hmm. didn't, it, I didn't have to be mm -hmm. okay in two weeks. I didn't have to be okay in a month. And I, and, and he also taught me to, that he would grieve with me. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I sat in my closet and just cried. It was like the most painful crying I'd ever felt to the point that I was like begging God, please just let me not feel anymore, you know? Yeah. But the, the greatest comfort was not that the pain would go away, but it was that he was with me, you know? So mm -hmm. in the midst of it, I think, yes, there's, I totally agree in different situations. There's a time to fight. There's a time to go like what Novo was saying, realize, oh, I'm like giving into like a defense mechanism. I need to run the opposite direction. And then at other times, you have to allow yourself to feel, even if let's say you're getting abused, like let's say your innocence was lost or like, you know, an opportunity was stolen. If you don't acknowledge that something was wrong to begin with, you're yeah. just going to cover it up and it's going to fester and it's going to at some point explode in your face with like, you're going to have way deeper issues to deal with, you know? Yeah. So for me, even in this last week, I mean, I know we've all been going through it. I feel like I've had to just acknowledge that I'm in pain, God, and I'm gonna where are you in it? And I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you into this pain. And that's currently where I'm at. I'm just feeling it at this point. I know about the truths of God, and I'm looking to them without negating the fact that there's pain. I don't know. Does that make, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. That that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, just to yeah, Jesus never minimizes our pain. Yeah. He's right there with us. Like, That's beautiful. Powerful. It's like, it dawned on me that overcoming challenges and, and coping with challenges is really about confronting your fears, your fears yeah. concerning your identity, your fears concerning how you go forward, your fears concerning something happening to someone that you love and knowing inside mm -hmm. that you can't deal, you know? Mm -hmm. and I, and I know that I can't deal with anything absent him. And I don't want to have him show me that he can deal with even the loss of someone or, that I love. Because I know he can show me that. But I also know that he's a good father and he doesn't want to show me that. So I have to, I have to, I have to get even over the fear that God will show me how strong I am 
that I can cope with that. Okay. I'm talking about fears <laughs> for your fears, people. Okay. Fears for your fears. I, 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 I have them and I struggle yeah. with it. And, and I constantly have to speak scripture to it. The Lord didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Your fear stops you, right? Mm. Your fear makes you unable to go forward. Your fear ste steals yeah. your life, even yeah. as it steals your joy. Yeah. So it's, it's right? Yeah. Can I just say something on that? Just, I think this is why, like, I actually think I want to start viewing challenges, not like death or anything like that by any means, but like challenges and obstacles in life as it's actually necessary. How else would we even be faced or how else would we even overcome these fears unless we were faced with them? And like, mm. even with loss or disappointment, or uh, I don't know, just there's so there's, the gamut is just huge of like potential fear. Like I'm thinking of these, these plants, that I, it's so random. I planted these hostas in my front yard. They literally got eaten up and died. Like the, I, I thought, oh, they're gone. We're going to have to get new, new plants. It looked like they had died. A year later, like right now, they're blooming so big. And I'm like, I mean, the Lord's been like, give me so much revelation in just plants of just how mm. they're, it's actually is the struggle that makes them blossom. It actually is the mm. pruning that makes them spring forth even more life than they could have ever had before. So like, even just what you're saying about fear, like it, it really can be a gift. I mean, I think any sort of loss is always an opportunity for the Lord to bless even more. To, to show you even more, to give you even more. You know, we see it time and time again. And like, I feel like after every challenge, it's like, it's like a overcome a little bit of your fear here. Then the next layer, now you have faith because you know that he got you through to do it again, but something bigger and bigger until we're completely rid of it. You know, probably not till we see his face, but so I, I love what you're saying. I, I want myself to view challenges as an opportunity. Yes. Feel the pain, all of that, but you know, like he's so good and he's going to get you through if you will let him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, you know, I, I, I think of James one uh, verses two to four, and, and I'm going to read it because it's just, it, it's really, it's, it's where we all want to be, right? Mm -hmm. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces mm -hmm. perseverance. Let yeah. perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I don't want to lack anything. That, mm. that's, and if I get too far ahead of myself into what might happen in five minutes, I will get into lack because I will get into fear and doubt and insecurity and, and anger possibly. But if I sit, you know, trusting the Lord, you know, kind of waiting on the Lord for him to renew my strength, knowing that he will do that and that we will rise up on wings, you know, that we'll walk, we won't get weary, we'll run, we won't faint. Like really and truly, it's your opportunity to test the word of God in your life. Test mm -hmm. it. And it is true. The working of your faith produces perseverance, you know, and, and what is it? The other scripture that I love so much uh, perseverance, uh, Romans, uh, Romans five verses three to five, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know mm. suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because mm. God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy spirit who has been given to us. God's hope does not put us to shame. He wouldn't even teach us to persevere and he wouldn't teach us to have character and, and give us hope to mock us with that hope mm. by letting something happen that would make us hopeless. That's how, mm. that's how I really see it. And, and I, that's how I see our father who loves us. Mm.